praise the Lord. Somebody shout glory. glory. Amen. Turn to your neighbor saying you look beautiful or handsome this morning. And turn to someone else and say, I was so glad when I realized it was Sunday. And I realized it was time to come to the church. Say, I am the church. But I come to this church to be trained, to be equipped, to take more weapons that I could win my week, that I could dominate my year. Amen. Go ahead and lift your holy hands and just praise the Lord this morning. It doesn't matter what your week has been. It doesn't matter what challenging morning it's been. You have the authority. Amen. No fear, no sickness, no challenges shall by any means hurt you shall by any means overcome you for greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world say as he is so am i why don't you go ahead and rise to your feet hallelujah hallelujah Why don't you declare this with them? There's power. There's power.
go ahead and glorify the Father. Glorify Him this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Why don't you give a round of applause for our Father this morning? Amen. And just go ahead and lift your holy hands. And just close your eyes. This is a time between you and the Father. And just go ahead and name the three things that you're grateful for this morning. Go ahead and thank the Father for those things. Remove every form of distraction in your mind, in your heart. Take it out, take it out. This is your time with the Lord. Thank you, Father, thank you, Father. When you come into the Lord, I heard it said that when you come into Christ, there's no more crises. Amen. When you come into Christ, there's no more hopelessness. Praise the Lord. Say, that's me. Say, I can never be in a crisis. Say, I can never be hopeless. The greater one lives in me. Such a privilege it is that it is the Lord his word that we breathe that we meditate in day in and day out say i always have the advantage say i'm never disadvantaged praise the lord praise the lord
the Lord. How about a round of applause for our amazing praise and worship. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church family. Welcome, everyone. Welcome here to service today. So good to see everyone. And for those of you that are streaming in, we welcome you in with the love of Jesus Christ and the gift of the Holy Spirit. So now it's time for our Rhapsody, a uh, reading of our daily devotion. Um, those of you that don't have a Rhapsody, uh, raise your hand and our ushers will come around and give you a book. So today's word is taken from Sunday, March 27th. And the word is bearers of the kingdom and the glory. But when you, wait, you break that word down, it says, I carry the authority of God with splendor, holiness, and the majest majesty of the Father. Amen. Amen. Taking from the book of 1 Thessalonians 2.12, the scripture says that ye would walk worthy of God, who had called you unto his kingdom and glory. From the teachings of Jesus, the kingdom of God has already come. In fact, the Bible says that kingdom is in our hearts, letting you know that it's a spiritual kingdom. In the book of Luke, chapter 17, verses 20 to 21, scripture says, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation, neither shall they say, Lo, here, or lo, there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Amen. We're not on our way to the kingdom. No, 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 family. We carry the kingdom in us. Not only are we in the kingdom, we're also bearers of the kingdom. In that kingdom, there's glory. The two aren't separate. The Bible talks about the glory of the kingdom. We answered the calling for the kingdom. We've also answered the calling for the glory. In the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 14, it says, Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. We've obtained glory. Hallelujah. Say, we've obtained glory. glory. Amen. No wonder Jesus said in John chapter 17, verse 22, in his prayer to the, to the Father, so powerful. When I read the scripture, it, it literally brought me into tears. Praise God. And it says, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be one even as we are one. Paul said in Romans chapter 8, verse 30, that we've been glorified. This glory is an eternal one, and it's inherent in our spirits. In 1 Peter chapter 10, verse, excuse me, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10, Scripture says, but the God of all grace who had called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. 
blessed be God. The Bible describes this glory as excellent glory. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10, it calls it the glory that excelleth. This is the glory of the kingdom to which we belong and which we bear. This is the glory of the kingdom that you and I reside in. 2 Peter 1 verse 3 says, we've been called to glory and excellence. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9 takes it even further and it says, where to set forth the wonderful deeds and display the virtues and perfections of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Say, I am the light of this world. Hallelujah. The reason we can show forth his glory, display his virtues and his perfection, is that we're bearers of the same. We are one in Christ. Amen. So give expression to his glory in your world and impact others with the life of the kingdom. Amen. So praise God that we work and we walk worthy of his calling on our lives. Amen. And in our lives, we're living in the way that the Father wants us to live. And that is truly to glorify him and to honor him in everything that we do. As you join heirs in Christ, we're living the kingdom life. And the glory is the splendor. It is the holiness. And it is the majesty of God that is displaced and displayed in us as barriers in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. So we can please repeat this confession after me. I'm a bearer of the power, glory and dominion of the kingdom of God. The kingdom expands in me and it expands through me. My world and environment are impacted by the glory of God. I walk in the consciousness and reality of my present hour, location in Christ, and manifest his righteousness to the glory of his name. Amen. If we could please rise to our feet. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this precious day that you have set before us, Father God. Knowing, Father God, Lord, that this day would bring, Father God, such glory to you, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for ushering the body of Christ here today as we come together, Father God, Lord, and we share the excitement, Father, of a powerful word that will be ministered today. We thank you, Father God, Lord, that service today is led by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence here. We thank you for orchestrating service from the beginning to the end. Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, as we lift up our service onto you, Father God. We thank you that the power of your word, Lord Jesus, is on the tongue of our pastor and mom, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for the anointing that you have placed upon our life, Father God. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for the blessings that you have bestowed upon her, Lord Jesus, and in all areas of her life. For that blessing, Father God, she continues to share, Father God, in each and every one of us, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father God, Lord, as we sit, Father God, and we partake in your word today, that our hearts are receptive, Father God, and our 
our ears are reclined, Father God, that we're not just taking away, Father God, nuggets, Father God, Lord, but we're taking barrels of gems, Father God, from every word, Lord Jesus, that will be spoken today, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your love, Father God. We thank you for your grace, Lord Jesus. And we thank you, Father God, for all that you do for us. All this, Lord, we pray for in the matchless name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And all of God's children say, amen, amen. Please focus your attention to the screen. We serve a great God. Oh.
video so thank you to all of those that uh, had joined us in this month of you know March the month of our food bank distribution along with some other ministry are we good media all right so I also want to acknowledge media because if they're they've moved on to their new office which is right upstairs <laughs> some of us you know some of us when we were down here you know you're like oh they're getting the back of my head as they're shooting well Praise God that uh, the top has already been amazingly remodeled for our media, so we're very happy that they are happy, because when they're happy, everything looks good up here, right? Praise God. Are we okay with the background? Oh, man, let's go ahead and pray. Father, we just thank you so much for glorifying each and every one of us with the glory of your Son, Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you that the glory is evident not only in our lives, but also in our body and also in our family, our job, and in our business, and in all areas of our lives. We thank you for the work of Alos Paracleto. He is Rock Hakodesh, meaning he is a Holy Spirit. You have given him to us, for he is our greatest helper. He is our greatest comforter, the one who is a strengthener, and the one who stands by when we need him. We could not go through life here on earth without him. For Jesus has said that I must ascend, but I will send someone to be with you, and he will be with you. And Father, we thank you so much that we're so humbled and so honored that you've never left us to be alone. We were always with someone who has never, who has never left us, but is here with us now and forever until the very day that you return. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your work this morning in the hearts of the people and in their mind. You are the master communicator. You're communicating with them at their level. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for who you are in our lives. So many things to be grateful for, but words are inadequate, you know, to display and to show, Father God, how much we love you and so thankful. But through the work of the Holy Spirit, he knows all things. So we love you, we bless you, and we say this in the matchless name of Yeshua. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. I have a slide that I want to put up here and a slide that I want you to meditate on. And it's a question that I want you to think about it. What is your answer to this question? Because I want to speak to you this morning about the effulgence or the glory of God. The effulgence or the glory of God. In other words, you know, the question is, has God given us his glory? Has God given us his glory? So I want you to meditate on that. And it touches so well with today, with this morning's Rhapsody that Sister Chris um, had ministered on about the glory of God. The glory, another word for the glory is effulgence. Say effulgence. I can't hear you. Say effulgence. That's right. So the effulgence is God's glory. Hey. Okay? And I have up there the question that I want you to, again, meditate on it because throughout our message, prayerfully that you will have your answer. And, you know, as I've said over and over again, it's about the word, the word, the word. 
because we always have to take you back to scripture so that we can bring it back so that you can understand this is exactly what God is saying. This is the answer for what we're looking for. So again, the question to you up here is, has God given us his glory? Has God given us his glory? So let's go to the book of John 17, verse 22. John 17, verse 22. And John 17, verse 22, when it reads, And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. Did you hear that? And the glory, this is Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, this is Jesus speaking. And he's saying to the Father, And the glory which thou hast given me, I have given them. Now, there are those who say that God never shared his glory with anyone, right? You know, true, because we would say the same thing. You know, when we see somebody that's taking all God's glory, the first thing that comes to our mind is like, mm, how dare they take the glory of God? We, nobody shares the glory of God. How dare? Why are they taking the glory of God? It's all about God. It's the glory of God. Right? We see that. Media, I'm putting you on the test, am I? I literally walked on the side to test if you're all up there paying attention. <laughs> all right? So again, you know, many would say, you know, God never shares his glory with everyone. But look at John 17, 22. Right there we read, and the glory which thou gavest me, Jesus speaking with his father, and he's saying, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. Who is them? You and I. Those who have made Jesus Christ their Lord and Savior. Them, the children of the Most High God. Yes. Okay? Yes, God would never share his glory with the heathen. He would never share his glory with the heathen gods. This is what we're referring to. But he has given, according to John 17, verse 22, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. So you have to understand, again, when we read into the scripture, we look not only at the context, you hear that many times, we look at the history, we look at the background, we study. So what does that mean? For the glory which thou has given me, I have given them. And so we can break it down, because if you look at it, he has not shared his glory. God refused to share his glory with the heathens, with the heathen gods. But with us, his kids, with us, his children, he did better than just share. Jesus did better than share his glory with us. He gave us his glory and made us his glory. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when I said, you know, did God give us his glory? Did he share his glory with us? He did better than sharing his glory. He gave his glory. He said, for the glory that you have given me, I give them. Right? So again, going back to scripture. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. So God, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, who's also God, he has given us his glory. He did much better than share. He didn't just share his glory. He gave us his glory. Now let's go to the book of Isaiah 42, verse 8. Isaiah 42, verse 8. And it reads, I'm just going to go to the part, okay? So, and it says, my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Again, my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. He wasn't talking about not sharing his glory with his children. He was talking about idols. This is what he is talking about. Papa God has made us partakers of his glory. Okay? He was not talking about the glory given to us. He was merely talking about he is not going to share his glory or give his glory to any idols. So let's read again the words of the master in our opening verse, John 17, verse 22. John 17, verse 22, and it reads, And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. So he was praying to the Father. Jesus Christ was praying to the Father at this moment. But notice that he didn't say, 
The glory which thou gavest me, I shall give them when they are in heaven. Right? Some of us are thinking, yes, we're going to be glorified. When we are in heaven, we're going to be glorified. The scripture speaks for itself. The scripture literally says in John 17, 22, and the glory which thou gavest who? He, which Jesus, I have given them. Okay? Jesus didn't say that the glory that you have given me, Lord, I'm going to give it to them when they arrive in heaven. When they come up to heaven, I will give them that glory. No, he did not say that. Scripture speaks loud and clear that he has given you that glory now. That's the glory of Christ in you. Okay? Again, John 17, 22. And the glory which thou givest me, I have given them that they may be one even as we are one. Huh. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. Has not the glory of God is in you? Does not the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit reign so mightily in you? Yes. Jesus said that the glory that God gave him, he has in turn given to us. It is a fact. Again. Our Lord Jesus Christ has said that the glory that God has given him, he has given to us. The Lord Jesus does not mind that you're sharing his glory because he gave it to you. He gave you his glory in the first place. So not to believe and to accept this, it's like pure ignorance. That's not humility. It's ignorance of not knowing his word. And so, you know, as I'm reflecting on this, you know, growing up, you know, you'd think, oh, you know, if, if, you, if you're one that goes to church, you would hear it many times. And you say, like, you know, they're, they're stealing the glory from God. No. You see, God wants to give you his glory. Why? Because when, when great and wonderful things happen to you, right? When great, wonderful things happen to you, you're like cheering because in your heart, it's like, Glory to God. Father, I thank you so much for what you've done in my life. You see, what you're doing is, as you're giving that thanksgiving, people are looking at you, and they're saying that, who is he? Who is she? But when they know that you're a Christian, when they know that you're a child of God, immediately they'll say, huh, that's one of Jesus' followers. Huh, that's one that loves God so much. And so what do the people do? They glorify the God that you worship. The Almighty God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You see how people come to know who our true God is? They come to know him through you. Without you, they would not know who he is. And so his glory is in you because in all that you do, there are no failures. There is no sickness. But you've got to know who you are. When you know who you are, you do extraordinary things. You were ordinary when you were born in this world, but once you make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, you become extraordinary. How can you continue to be ordinary when they're the greater one that are in you? The word says that greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. So if you've got the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, great magnificent th things that they've done. They've created the heaven, they created the earth, they created you and I. They've given man wisdom and knowledge in the things that you create. Beautiful architecture buildings, beautiful, I mean, amazing airplane that can fly for like good 12, 11 hours on air. Who does that? You can only glorify God because really, who is able to receive such great knowledge and to make the impossible possible? But through you, he is glorified. No wonder our Lord Jesus said, the glory that you have given me, I have given them. Because when they're glorified, they know exactly where that glory goes to, to the Father. Amen? So that ought to tell you how important you are to Him. You are so valuable. You are so important to Him. He needs you. Because wherever you are, you are at a place, what we call a chariot. A chariot is a place where you can take the gospel. A chariot is a place where you can share the gospel about Jesus Christ. It is a place where because you're extraordinary, people look for you. You are the answer to their prayers. You are the answer to their cries. 
When they're praying, you are right there. God needs you. He sent you to be with them. He sent you to uplift them, to encourage them, to strengthen them. He sent you to be in a place at the right time. A place that is so needed that you are the answer to the prayers and to the cry. What, would you think that as you're praying that Jesus would manifestly appear right before you? A thousand times no. It has to be in a very special, 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 you know, um, occurrence or incident in which he will appear. But many times over when you're praying, he sends someone to you. Or you will be at a place where you had a question, you were need an answer, and all of a sudden that answer was provided to you. So you see how Lord Jesus said, the glory that you have given me, I have given them. Because they appear at the right time, at the right place, at a moment's notice in which they needed an answer. And you were there. Say, I am the answer to your problem. Praise God. All right? So not to believe and accept the fact that Jesus has given you his glory. Again, that is not humility, but that is ignorance of the word of God. So moreover, let's go to Romans 8, verse 30. Romans 8, verse 30. In Romans 8, verse 30, and I want to read from this part, and it says, Them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Again, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. In other words, you've been justified by the death of Jesus Christ. Right? The word says that by the offense of one man, Death, right? By the death of one man, condemnation came upon all. We all know what it feels like to be condemned. By the offense of one man, death came upon all, and that is condemnation. We know how condemn condemnation feels. We know how, you know, people look down. We know how we feel oppressed. We're the worst critics in our lives. But then it says, but by the righteousness of one man, Judgment came upon all, and that is justification. You have been justified. You have been justified by God. And therefore, in Romans 8, verse 30, and it says, Then he also justified, and whom he justified, whom he also glorified. When he justified you, he glorified you. So you've got to understand the beauty of his word, because his word beautifies us. You know, the world in we, which we live in, the environment, wherever we are, right, we become who we are in that environment. But, for example, yesterday in our foundation class, I said, you know, if you're raised up in a hood, you tend to have the mindset of those that, you know, are in the hood. Either you're going to be, you know, selling drugs, either you're going to be selling yourself, whatever it may be, either you're going to be so, you know, in poverty, that you're, you're going to have the mindset that, oh, my children are going to do the same thing. You know, you're not going to get any better without the word of God. But whom he justified, he also glorified, meaning that when you receive Jesus Christ and you're in the hood, right, there's no way that you can continue to have a mindset of a hood. You can, there's no way you can have a mindset of poverty while you know the, the, the word of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of Jesus Christ has beautified you so much that he causes you to be successful. He reminds you that you're not, a, you're not a failure. He reminds you that you are valuable. Why? Because he created you. He knows what he created. There's no way that a God who is a God of all things, of heaven and earth, there's no way that God created you to be a failure. There's no way that he created you to enjoy being sick. There's no way, because God who loves you, there's no way as a father who's giving you the best would sit there on his throne looking down and smiling at you while you are suffering in bed. There is no way. But he has given us something, and something even wonderful, and that is his word. He's given you the word to educate you. See, the word also say that, you know, whom, you know, when you receive the word, right? He said, not only do you receive the word, but he also sends a priest. He also sends someone to share and minister the word to you. Because there are certain times that you can read the word. You know, the Holy Spirit will help you along. He will give you insight. He will give you revelation of the word. And then there are times when you don't understand what you're reading and you have to try to figure it out. And the Holy Spirit will send 
a minister to you, and they will share, give you greater revelation and insight so that your mind can comprehend and understand what you are reading. So the Word of God is beautiful. Because when you understand the Word of God, it beautifies you from the inside out. So no longer can you be living with a mindset of poverty. You have to make a change. And a change can only come through you. Because remember, God is the God of his word, and he will, not, he will not cross over your will. Because whatever you will to do, you will do it. And he will not come in and he will cross that line. He will not cross that line until you open up and he allows himself to come in. Okay, you are very valuable. We've been glorified. Jesus Christ is the express image of God's person in you. He is the effulgence. He is the effulgence, or he is the outshining of the God in you. This is the glory of God. The Bible says, and I want to go to 2 Peter. 2 Peter 1, verse 17. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 17, and it reads, and I want to read from this part. It says, he received from God the Father honor and glory. Who received from the Father honor and glory? Jesus. And what did Jesus say? The glory which thou hast given me, I have given them. So what he's saying is, Jesus received from God the Father honor and glory. Huh. He has given you much more than glory. He's given you honor. Now the same glory that the Father gave Jesus is what he has freely given to you. No wonder he says in Isaiah 60 verse 1, Isaiah 60, verse 1, and it says, Arise and shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Hey, hey. Ha, ha. Ay, ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. He said, Arise and shine. He's re referring to you. He said, Arise and shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Arise and shine, for thy light is come. How long are you sitting in the darkness? How long will you not arise and shine for him? Because when you arise and when you shine, he is receiving that glory. He said, Let your light shine so that many will see it. But don't go in such humility that you would hide that light. When you hide that light, no one sees the light. But he said, you are the light in this world. Have you not read that? He said, you are the light in this world. He said, your light has to be up on the hill. Because when your light is up on the hill, it gives light to the city. Huh. That means the multitude of people that are living in the city will see that light of you shining. Outshining there for him. So when you say that, oh, I just, you know, I don't want nobody to see what I'm doing. Well, glory to God. Give me scriptures then. Because we go back to, it's a word, it's a word, it's a word. We have to go back to scripture. I mean, just like an attorney, right? You know, before an attorney come up there, he has to make sure that he has all the facts to support his case. Just like when we do ministration, you have to have all your facts. Make sure you have all the scripture to support it. You have to be like the people of Berea, right? What do we say about the people of Berea? The people of Berea not only come to sit with the disciples, they would sit, they would listen diligently, and they would be taking notes. And then when the teaching is over, these people would go right back to their home, and they started searching scriptures. They want to make sure that everything that has been ministered to them, it was true, and it was aligned with the word. So that's what most of us have to do. Don't just take the word, and then you leave out here, and then you do nothing about it. Coming to church is school. This is where we educate you. We give you the word. We build you up so that you may be able to build somebody up, encourage, and strengthen them with the power of God's word. I mean, it's wonderful I can give you other words, and I can strengthen and encourage you. But if, it does, but if I don't have any great support from Scripture, that's useless. It's futile. Because then it won't sink. It will not saturate into your spirit. But the word of God has to have preeminence. means the word of God ought to be first place in your life. So the word of God has to have preeminence in you. You are the epitome of God's glory. Say, I am the epitome of God's glory. 
Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. And it says, But we all, but we all with open face, beholding as in a glass mirror the glory of the Lord, we are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Look at that. It says, but we all with open face, our face, open face beholding as in a glass. What is that glass? A mirror. When you look into that mirror, who do you see? When you look in a mirror, who do you see? You see yourself in this mirror. And yourself is an image of God. For he has created you in his image. And then look, it says, not only do you see that image, right? The face beholding as in a glass mirror, the glory. He said, the glory, that face that you see in the mirror, it's the glory of the Lord. And you are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So has God shared his glory with you or he has given you his glory? He has given you his glory. Now, mirrors reflect whatever is before them, right? You stand before the mirror, it reflects off, you know, what it sees. And that's you. Which means that when you stand before the mirror of God, the mirror of God, when you stand before the mirror of God, mirror his word. When you stand before the mirror of God, the word of God, what you see, which is the glory of God, is actually yourself. That's you. You are looking at the glory of God, the very image of God. So therefore, not only has he given you his glory, he's made you his glory. You are the expression of God's glory. You are the expression of God's glory. I want to take you down to the book of John 17. John 17, verse 20 to 22, and this is from the NIV version. John 17, verse 20 through 22 from the NIV version. And it says, My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us. Did you see that? May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. Ay, yeah, yeah. So that the world may know that you have sent me. So that the world may know that he has sent you. You have been sent. But it was his prayer that the world may know that he has sent you. I have given them the glory that you gave me that they may be one as we are one. When you have the glory of Jesus, because when you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in you, you go out there, you lay hands, and you bring healing upon people. Someone in your home is challenged or you are challenged, you lay hand on yourself. And you speak for the word of God. The glory of God is in you. And so when you speak for his word upon yourself, you bring healing upon yourself because you're speaking his word. His word is marpe. His word is medicine. Say, his word is marpe. And marpe means medicine. His word is medicine in you. And so because he has glorified you, therefore you ought to go out and you lay hands. When those individuals become healed, they glorify God, don't they? They thank God for sending someone like you to them. The glory of God is amazing. Let them get their healing through you. No matter what challenges that they may go through, let them bring that healing. You are the one that you know, brings that healing upon them. Let that healing be manifested in them. So... When you have the glory of the Father, which you do have, because Jesus said, the glory that you have given me, I have given them. You see, 
Like I said, he is not only just sharing his glory, but he has given you his glory. Therefore, you can do all things to Jesus Christ, who what? Who strengthens you. Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Ha ha. Ah, yeah, yeah. Prayfully that this is a great insight, a revelation of who you are. So no longer that you can be ignorant of the word, no longer that you can play that humility role, but boldfully, right? Being steadfast, standing on the word of God, what God says who you are. He mean, you mean a lot to him, just as he should mean a lot to you. Amen? So you are the glory of God and he wants to bring changes. In using you, he wants to bring changes into our country. He wants to bring changes into our cities. He wants to bring changes into our family. He needs you. You have to be educated because the word is so important. You won't just get anything just by listening. If you're one that you keep listening from different pastors, you're moving on. Oh, yeah, did you hear this pastor, right? You're moving on. I can tell you it will bring you a spirit of confusion. And you will have endless questions because... You're, you're not focused. Stay focused. Let the word of God be the only source that you can get your answer from. Teshuva, teshuva. Get back into that first love. Return back to your first love. The first love of diligently seeking him. The first love of diligently studying about him. Don't worry about what is going on on the outside because he has given you his glory. And that glory, he uses you. How? How do we dismantle the work of the enemy? Through your prayers. Because through your prayers, we dismantle the work of the enemy. You have to understand that men's outside, nations and leaders, they are negatively influenced. How are they negatively influenced? Spiritual realm. You do have demons as we do have the clouds of witness as we gather together, as just as the children of God gather together, so that you also have the children of the evil one that gathers together for what for evil and you have the children of god that gathers together for what for the glory of god for what for the peace the peace when you study scripture you're going to find out that the god of peace appears more often than the god of love in new testament in the old testament you're going to find that there's god of war yeah because there's so many war that was going on but here in a new testament God of peace appears more often. What does that tell you? It means that he wants us to walk in peace. He wants the countries and the nations to be in peace. How can they be in peace if nobody knows what we need to do? But he has given us revelation. He has given us insight through his word to what? To pray for the peace. Russia and Ukraine, pray for peace. Because as long as the church, meaning as long as you and I are here on earth, nothing will ever happen. Because why? Because, you know, the gates of hell will not prevail, right? Through the church. Because the church will stand firm. The church will intercede in prayer. And it will speak in tongues. And therefore, when you're speaking and you're praying in tongues, you release like atomic bomb. They're like Hiroshima bomb. Boom, boom, boom. Fire, fire, fire. The power of what comes out of your word is what really dismantled the work of the enemy. You know, pastor goes on to say that, you know, it's God's plan. God's plan for you and I to be great warriors of prayer. We have to pray more and we have to worship more. Through the worship, answers will come. Through our prayers, we dismantle the work of the enemy. Leaders are being negatively influenced by the work of demonic forces. And the only way that you and I and the whole body of church, you know, globally, the only way we can stop that, and guess what? It's not the country that is not gonna, that's going to stop it. It's the church. It's you and I. It is through our power of prayer, interceding in prayer to bring peace, to bring a stop to the war that is going on. When you pray for the economy of a nation, it's not really the, the things in the country that go back by themselves, Right? So when we pray for the nation, the economy of our nation, you know, again, it's not really the things in the country that goes back by itself. It's the managers. That's why God says that when you pray, pray for the leader. Now listen, if God wants to prosper his people, he gives them leaders, right? 
I want to walk you through so you understand the glory of important of what you are doing. When God wants to prosper his people, he gives them leaders. God always answers prayers through the right leadership. Mismanagement of resources brings poverty. For example, right now in the world, wherever there's shortage, it's not because there's not enough. It's because of mismanagement of resources. Did you hear that? When you hear that there is shortage, it's not because that there is not enough, but it's because of mismanagement of resources. In other words, it's because of whoever that is in leadership. So while they're having a bad time in the United States, for example, like the gas, right? Right now, currently, gas prices, right? You know, concern, big concern. Why? Why are there, you know, why are the gas prices that seems to be skyrocketing? Bad decisions, and it's affecting several countries. Mismanagement of resources. So when the right decision is made, things are changed. And no matter how God blesses a land, a nation, or a territory, no matter how God blesses them with resources, right? If they are badly managed, if they make bad decisions, the people will be in poverty. Did you understand that? We can pray for the economy of our state, but if the people that are in leadership make bad decisions, then there is a mismanagement of resources. Listen, this is easy to understand for many African and Asian because they understand. They understand shortage. They understand, you know, the, the resources, right? There are massive resources in Africa. There are massive resources in, the Asia, you know, in Asia. There are natural resources. These people in Africa and in Asia, in the Far East country, they walk on gold. They walk on oil. They walk on diamonds. And yet they are poor. Africa has the greatest natural resources. They have massive resources out there. But why are the people still poor? Bad decisions and listening to the wrong advice. True? When you make bad decisions, it's also because you're listening to the wrong advices. So if you learn to pray for your city, if you learn to pray for your country with the glory of God that is in you, if you pray for the leadership, then leadership in these countries will have wisdom to do the right thing. Because if they don't, then those leaders will be replaced by those who will do the right thing. Hallelujah. Shortage is caused by bad decision. When a country is in shortage, it's because of bad decision, mismanagement of resources. World leaders have announced that there's going to be a lot of food shortage. Believe it or not, this year, this year, they say the world leaders have come together and that there's going to be a lot of food shortage. And the first announcement, whether you know that or not, the first announcement came from the President of the United States. And when he made that announcement, that the United States is in shortage of food. How many of you heard that? Just one person. So if you didn't know that, our president have already made an announcement with the world leaders. He made an announcement with the world leaders that the United States is in a shortage of food. Ay, yeah, yeah. And you know what? The world leaders, they were in complete surprise because they have never known the United States was such thing as having food shortage. Everyone always looked up to the United States. But for the very first time, it blew the minds of these world leaders to look to the United States and say, what? They are in food shortage? The country that always comes out and helps every other country? And the only other country that no other country comes in to help. But the United States, when President Biden made that announcement just recently that America is in food shortage, it blew the minds of these world leaders to think, how could something like that be even possible? 
The world leaders have identified food shortage or such things in countries, right, like Africa, suffering places. But food shortage? So what does that mean? Food shortage, bad decision, mismanagement of resources. God hears and He answers our prayers. That Jesus said, I have the glory that you have given me, I have given them. You are the answer to the prayers and to the solutions of all these that's going on. All the problem that is going on, you are the answer. We have to pray for our country. The word says, if we do not pray for our country, then we will not live in peace. Right? Teshuva, teshuva. We turn back to our first love. Let's go back on our last scripture, Jeremiah 29, verse 7. Jeremiah 29, verse 7. And seek the peace of the city, whither I have called you to be carried away captives, and pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. Ay, ay, ay. He is saying, seek peace of the city, our city, all the cities. I ask you the question. Has God shared his glory and given us his glory? He has given us his glory. And so he's telling us that with the glory that is in you, the effulgence of God, for you are the glory of God, we have to do our part. And our part is to pray for our country, pray for our leaders, because there's an enemy behind scene that is working with these leaders. These leaders, believe it or not, when they all started out in their position, they all started out in humility. They were humble. They were willing to do anything. But then once that they're in power for quite a long time, all of a sudden it's like moving away from God has been something they don't want to hear any advice from. Now it's about what does others have to say. So pray for your country. Pray for your leaders. Again, he said, and seek the peace of the city, whether I have called you to be carried away captives and pray unto the Lord for it, for in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. God is letting them know that in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. You shall have the shalom. To live in peace in this city and this country and this state in which we are in, we have to pray for our country. We have to pray for our nation. You have to pray for our leaders. And if that is you and you're wanting that peace, I want you to go ahead, everyone, close your eyes. And those of you who are tuning in with us, I really want you to listen to this message. If you're wanting that peace and you want God to use you to be that peace, the answer, you know, to the cries and the problems of those that are out there, be the one that God can use in peace. I want you to repeat this prayer with me. Say, oh Lord God, I believe with all my heart in Jesus Christ. He is son of the living God. I believe that he died for me and that God raised him from the dead. I believe he is alive today. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ he is the Lord of my life from this day forward. And through him and in him, his name, I have eternal life. I am born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. I am now a child of God. Praise God. Well, congratulations. If you're in the house and you receive Jesus for the very first time as your Lord and Savior, you know, what I want you to do, we do have ushers in the back here. We want you to get together with them so that we can send you a gift, right? And that gift is now that you're born again. When you understand who you are, you, whoo, you're going to do great, wonderful, phenomenal things for our Lord Jesus Christ. And this will help you to grow as a Christian. So we have ushers back here. I want you to connect with them. Give them a number, not a fake number, a good number that we can connect with you, all right? 
Some of us don't want people to be calling us, but you know what? If it has to do with, you know, your, your eternal life, then it's very important. Use a number that, you know, we can connect with you. We won't harass you. We just want to connect with you and send you information. And then give us your email so that we can send you videos and we can send you upcoming events that if you want to be a part of it, join us. Amen? So if you're not even, you know, if you're not connected to a church, we'd like to say, welcome home. Welcome home. Let's go ahead and pray so that we have our praise and worship. Father, we just thank you so much. We are bearers of the power and the glory and the dominion of the kingdom of God, the kingdom that has expanded in us and through us, Father God. Our world and environment are impacted by the glory of God that is in us. We thank you for the manifestation. We thank you for the word, the revelation of Jesus when he said, Father, the glory that you have given me, I have given them. And so we walk in the consciousness and the reality of our present, our location in Christ and manifest his righteousness to the glory of his name forever and ever. Father, we pray this in the matchless name of Yeshua and the saints of God say, Amen. Go ahead and worship with the praise and worship.
us were blessed today with a powerful and valuable word and message for our pastor mom praise god as always pastor mom i love you and thank you so much for this privilege and opportunity so now it's time for our tithes and offering um if you are in need of an envelope uh, please raise your hands and our ushers will be coming around and hand the envelopes out So we have three ways that you can give um, your tithes and offering or your love offerings. And information is also going to be provided on the screen, but I'm going to read out to you um, the three different ways. Uh, the first is uh, you can give through Venmo. Um, you would have to download the Venmo app, of course. Um, the second is online. So you can visit our ministry page online. And the address is... Uh, www.mopmohawaii.com slash and just click on the giving link. The third way that you can give is also by text and that text number is 1-808-400-8513. Taken from the book of Proverbs chapter 11 verses 24 to 25 the scripture says there is one who is free in giving and yet he grows richer and there is one who keeps what he should give but he ends up needing more the man who gives much will have much and he who helps others will be helped himself amen Let's pray over our tithes and offering. Father, we come before you with humble hearts as we give unto you our tithes and offerings. May our gifts to you be used for your glory and to extend the work of your kingdom. Your word says, the man who gives much will have much. Bless all those who gave with a cheerful heart today. Bless their lives, bless their families, Father. Bless their health. Bless their jobs and all things that concern them, Father. May they never lack in anything, but always prosper in everything. We thank you, Father God, that their cup will continue to be overflowed with your blessings, Father God. Never lacking, Father God, never running empty, Lord Jesus, but overflowing with your blessings of goodness. Father, we love you, Lord. We honor you. and We bless your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen.
If we could all please rise as we conclude. Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you.